I'm going to show you how to make a base just like this one. But we're going to go through the materials first so you can see exactly what I'm using. Right. Okay. Battlefield basing. We'll record the audio at the same time as showing you all the various materials and things. Uh, that just might make it a little bit easier. So you've got your base and you want to make a battlefield for it. So there are things to consider, such as placement of the model, uh, how their feet sit, whether it's a single figure or uh, a robot or something that, that might need a bit more stability, a level surface, if you like. So you don't want to go like really bumpy and whatnot if you've got something big that's going to sit both feet flat on the floor. Um, you want to go up a little bit, but keep it level. Um, although, say for example, a uh, Eldari uh, Ranger or something who's got a very small footprint, uh, you could go quite high and obviously this is too big a base for him, but yeah, you can build up and have him sat on something or crouched or leaping over things. Um, right, so materials. Basically, you want to save absolutely everything that you can possibly get your hands on. Uh, so bits of old sprues, half painted things, doors for that support from a rhino, and having a good stock in your bits box, there we go, so the rhino parts is always handy. So we've got little bits from an old uh, laser cut MDF or wood. I think that was a building of some description, but we've got some nice interesting pieces in there that we can pop out if we need to, or, or use the whole thing, snap bits off, use them as structures. Um, for making rubble, there are a multitude of options. We'll start with what's probably the most expensive option. This is called model board. It's a resin infused, uh, almost foam like substance but it's, this is a high density one. Uh, I'll pop a link to where to get it from um, in the description below. This one's from Model Display Products, I believe. Um, obviously looks a lot neater than this. This one's been chopped around quite a lot, but it carves exceptionally well. And you can really make it look like chipped, and cracked rock or concrete and rubble and things like that very, very quickly and very, very easily. But Model, uh, model board or styling board or tooling board i think it's called uh, is really 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 good but it is quite expensive so if you do get some save it for special projects and things um save sprues from resin kits or anything like that these are called gates and they're just on forge wheel products or most uh resin miniatures and things just save everything because they can make good barriers and, and whatnot and obviously it's resin so they carve quite well obviously these are just wooden matchstick things matchstick sticks i guess would be the the, uh, the right phrase any bits of old tubing plastic card um you can buy specialty plastic card in uh, shapes such as this is like a good kind of thing um obviously they are they're not expensive but when you're starting out you don't want to go splashing out on loads and loads of stuff because most things for basing are pretty much free because they're scraps uh, so if you have a barbecue pinch some of the bamboo bamboo skewers because they can they can be quite useful right on to the next thing cork cork sheets are always really really useful now the trick with this is unless you get either cork tiles or you cover the surface in like a spackle or plaster or something it will look like cork so if you get tiles this surface this side has a coating on it is very shiny and smooth with a quick sand paint will stick to that and it will give you a smooth surface and stop it looking quite so much like cork you can't get away with it on the edges too much and um, it does occasionally kind of just still look like cork which is 
my biggest problem with it. Don't bother with buying specialist hobby cork. It is all the same stuff, just cork floor tiles. Uh, you can get a massive pack of about five, which are sort of a foot by foot sheet. Five of those for not much money at all. And they will last you a long, long time. Now, other slightly more realistic materials, uh, which are a bit more expensive and you have to put a bit of work into them. These are spare bits of baked Sculpey. So we've got normal Sculpey here, which has been baked. Um, when you roll it, you roll it out and fold it over several times and you create, you can see the layers there. And it creates layers and when you break it apart, it's got a sort of a, a, quite a nice rock-like texture, which can work really, really well. So that's normal Sculpey, which is the Sculpey original. So that's the same technique used with Super Sculpey, so you can see the layers in that. Uh, that one is a bit more, uh, a bit more brittle, um, a bit harder. So it depends what you have or what you decide to get, but they, they do the same job. The original Sculpey is quite nice. That's that's quite good to work with with big things like this and you, you can obviously break this apart quite easily and it breaks a sort of a rock-like pattern because of the layers. Uh, maybe the layers are a little bit too thick in this one but that just comes with practice. And this is the same technique done again but with milliput. So this has been, has been rolled over, very very thin, folded over and then baked and yes you can bake milliput. Makes it set just that little bit faster. And again, that's quite tough, brittle, but has a slightly different, more aerated look to it. So probably better for sort of uh, manufactured concrete and things like that. There are a multitude of other things that you can use as well. Uh, obviously, if we're talking 40K, you're going to want plenty of skulls. Now, this was with the uh, Age of Sigmar magazine, so these were quite cheap, but um, you can get these skulls not only from GW or if you've got a 3D printer you can 3D print them uh, or if you have handy with a bit of sculpting you can sculpt skulls of your own um, they're available all over the internet uh, I do recommend the GW ones though because it, it makes everything fit if you're working with Warhammer it provides uh, a sort of grounding in the universe when all the skulls are uh, supposed, well, not supposed to be there, but they're they're from the same universe. I think is probably the best way to put it. But that is it as far as materials go. You can use whatever you want. Don't pay through the nose for specialist things. Pretty much anything you can get can be um, gained over time. So if you've got a bits box or you happen to be crafting or you see just see anything that should be you'd normally throw away break it up save it um, you, you do tend to turn into a bit of a hoarder when you're uh, working with basing but there we go so now we're gonna actually build the base so what we'll do is we'll start off we'll cut up some of these bits of Sculpey and we'll just try and roughly break them make a kind of rock-like texture carve away at them with the with the hobby knife uh, the scalpel and uh, please be careful with it don't want to injure yourself um, just try and be as random as possible when you're working with basing uh, you don't want too much uniformity so what we're going to do is we're going to work with a variety of materials we'll work with most of the materials that we've mentioned um, I end up not actually using uh, any plastic bits apart from the skulls on the base uh, but you obviously absolutely can do in fact it's a good idea to do the same as I'm doing to the rocks with the plastic bits and just carve away chips and cracks and things so we're going to use two different kinds of Sculpey we're going to use some of the modeling board which we've popped on there already um, be messy with this just go nuts uh, if stuff falls onto the base just observe how it falls and if it falls nicely glue it in place so we've got some plasticard rod that 
any kind of rod here will work. Um, any kind of tubing, as long as it's something that can that can either paint will stick to, or that you can sand and then paints will stick to it, then by all means use it. Basing is one of those things you can you can do whatever you want. So we've popped these plastic card rods there, and I just want sort of a broken pipe like look to it, and we'll just start gluing them down um, as as they are. And you just want to run some of the glue underneath just to hold them basically um, in place, just very roughly before you go in with a bit more with a bit more glue. And you just start cutting things, tidying things up. Well, it's really the opposite of tidying things up. So make things rougher and more broken and dented. And the trick to a good base is you want to make it feel like it's part of a wider world. So where I've got the pipes that are coming off the edge of the base, what we'll do is we'll cut those in line with the edge of the base. So it looks like they're extending off into a wider world. We're using the cork here just to simulate a kind of uh, reinforced concrete. So you just drill a hole, pop a paper clip in there. And you want to use two pairs of pliers and just bend the end parts like so. You want at least a few, at least three pieces in there, pieces of paper clip. That'll make it look uh, quite nice. Again, we're trying to you don't want things sticking outside of the base or over the side of the base. So we'll try and position that so everything's sort of pointing inwards a little bit. Uh, I think that's more personal preference than anything. I don't like things hanging over bases. But obviously you can. So with that all glued down, we'll stick a few more pieces of cork on there. This is the shiny side up, so note that. Uh, and when it's primed, uh, you'll be able to see that it looks very much like concrete. It's, it's, it's quite a good, quite a good effect. Um, here, use your scraps. Any bits that you've carved off, just drop them on. Just adds a bit of variety because you're going to put sand on there as well. And this just adds just more texture, more layers, more variety, which is always a good thing. There we go. So right, we'll trim down anything that's sticking out over the edge. So be very, very careful here. Uh, plastic card and cork are, are very easy to trim though, so it shouldn't be too much of a problem at all. You want to follow the angle of the base. The, the look I always aim for for my bases is to make it look, once it's primed, as if it's a either 3D printed or cast resin base. There we go. Now all these spare bits as well, pop them into your sand container and mix them up. So we'll just pop some glue on there. This is the usual Mod Podge. Go section by section because if you do the whole thing, you won't have time to tidy it up before it starts to set a little bit more than is ideal. So do a little bit, scrape it off any areas where you don't want the sand because it can look weird if you uh, leave the sand where the where the glue wants it search because it'll stay on top of these pipes and things like that it'll stick to weird parts of the rock where sand normally wouldn't settle so it just gives you a little bit more realism just by doing some adjustments and then what you can do is you don't want any gaps or voids underneath rocks so we just want to mix up some sand and some mod podge and just to make a sort of filler paste and we'll push that into any of the uh, any of the larger gaps there's a gap underneath one of the rocks there it's not too bad what I envision for the model sitting on top of it. It's going to be standing sort of either side of the main uh, 
those raised rocks in the middle, or you could have a character leaping off the rocks. It depends what the model is that you've got and how you want to approach your, your basing theme. Main point is, is lots of variety, and then you tie everything together with the painting, which we'll do in another video because it uh, will go into a bit more depth um, than normal. So we'll add some skulls. These are the plastic GW skulls, and now this is a rarity. This is old Games Workshop barbed wire. Uh, it's probably not the most realistic of barbed wire. It's just wire wrapped around more wire, uh, but I quite like it. So for the skulls. A bit of blue tack on the end of a knife allows you to pick them up and pop a bit of glue on and place those skulls wherever you want nice and easily. Excuse the glasses creeping into shot there. So we'll get we'll get about three or four of those skulls on. I think I end up doing about three of them. But if you are more corn inclined, then Obviously more skulls are better. So we want a little bit of this barbed wire. Uh, ended up being too much and too large to, uh, to start with. So we cut it down and then sort of twist it down so it looks a little bit smaller. You don't want it overpowering. You don't want huge pieces of barbed wire overpowering the base. Obviously, you've got to think about a transport as well. If this is, is going to be a gaming piece for any reason, uh, you don't want it to be a thing that might get damaged in transport or moving around the battlefield. Not that I game very much with mine, or, or if at all. I replaced it on the corner there, except corner on the edge, and decided that round through the middle is probably a a little bit easier. So pop it into place and then the good thing with the uh, barbed wire is you can just run a bit of super glue whilst it's in place on any points of contact and that will hold it. Whilst you've got the glue out and as long as everything else is dry, um, obviously this video has lots of editing in it, once it's dry just dab on some super glue just to seal that sand in place and there we go one finished battlefield base. Hopefully that's been of use to people. Uh, we built the base, primed it, and now we're going to be doing some painting. So we'll start with Dawnstone. Now it's a good idea to look at some reference for battlefields because uh, they can be hugely varied depending on the country that they're in, the scenario or the, the planet that you want them to be on. Um, for this one, I'm going for a sort of generic urban um, city kind of look to it. Obviously, if you're in a, a desert area, you want more orangey, brainy dust sort of tones to it. But for this one, lots of greys, lots of concrete, um, rust tones, things like that, sort of general urban. Uh, urban basing. So we've got a base coat of Dawnstone and then what we'll do is we'll add some shading with uh, Eshin Grey. We'll just we'll go around some of the rocks and we'll, we'll define some of the shapes. Uh, just It just gives a little bit extra. You, again, as I always say, it's all about layering. You're building up the effect that you want. So start lighter and then and then go down dark tones and layer washes and things over the top always seems to work really well and, and simulates real life far more uh, than just plonking colours on top of other colours. So get that ashen grey into all the cracks, crevices, leave the larger sections of uh, the rubble alone. Um, if you are going to put any on, just do a little bit as I've done here, just on some of the edges, um, just to simulate a bit of shadow, nothing major, just on some of the corners.
Here we go. Right, with that all dry, we'll pick out some of the stones in solid eschen grey and we'll do some in rhinox hide as well. So just alternate between the two. If you look at your reference pictures of battlefields, there's tons of different colours. So the more different colours you can add in along the sort of browns and grey ranges uh, in, in even sort of cream tones as well, just add in as many as you want. I haven't done a huge amount on this one. This is just really just an example, but just go bananas because you'll find that there'll be far more colors than you expect. If you look at, uh, I think I found some pictures of colorized World War II uh, streets, sort of ruined streets from, from battles and whatnot. And there were just so many more uh, colors than, than even I had expected. And there were bits of wires and, and all sorts of things just, just piled up. So yeah, layering, layering, layering. Just using some of that to redefine the shadows as well. And then we'll drop in some administratum gray onto the, the large sections of rock and rubble. We just want to separate those a little bit more. Um, we'll give them a wash of some basilican gray uh, later on, but now we just want to, you just want to separate them from the, from the rest of the, from the rest of the grays. see here I'm doing adding little sort of scratches and things on there as well just that just adds a bit of texture now what we want to do is just highlight well I say highlight paint the skulls white um, because we're going to use skeleton horde over the top of those which is a really really nice um bone color it's the citadel contrast paint and it's probably one of the best ones that they do really good for bones uh, especially with you with a, a bit of added highlights afterwards but i find it works best over uh very very pale colors such as white you could do screaming skull but if that kind of darkens it a little bit too much and we'll also drop it, but not to worry. Now we'll block in the, anything that's going to be rust colored with Mornfang Brown. So we're going to do the pipes and the uh, razor wire, barbed wire kind of stuff. Um, want it to look really old. There's some also some bits of uh, metal jutting out from a piece of concrete as well. So we'll, we'll paint all those in Mornfang Brown.
then what we're going to do, we're going to add a layer of thinned Agrax Earthshade. You don't want to go full straight, straight from the pots Agrax on this because then you'll, you'll cover uh, any of the variation that you've already added. And this is part of the sort of layering of the, of, of the base and of the effect. Uh, is lots of layers of, of slightly thinned um, paint and washes and things and just, just build it up. Uh, don't go over the rust uh, too much. You, you don't, you simply don't need to because we're going to be adding uh, thinned paints for, for the rust effect and you, you don't want to darken the Mournfang brown down too much. So um, one coat of the thinned Agrax will do the trick. Um, don't go over the skulls either is a good uh, a good point because obviously we're going over with skeleton order later so no point in doing two washes. you do get it anywhere just wash your brush off get a bit of water and you can just push the the wash around as long as you're fairly quick uh, it doesn't dry instantly but it's it's if you if you're fast enough you can you can move it around a little bit okay a bit of thinned silicon gray over some of the rocks again it's it's quite a dark strong color uh, straight from the pot so don't go straight from the pot thin it down a bit and it'll give you a, a really nice subtle a subtle effect obviously if you're after more of a your typical warhammer style base then yes don't thin these washes as much but we're, we're going for something that's a just a touch more realistic skeleton horde uh, don't thin this there is no need to thin this the effect works best if you don't thin it some of these contrast paints work far better if you if you don't thin them not all of them but, but some of the some of the good ones you can use straight from the pot now we're just going to go for a quick very selective dry brush of administratum gray just to pick out some of the edges uh, uh, again this is very very subtle picking out some of the dirt some of the rocks and some of the edges of some of the bigger bigger pieces of uh, masonry and, and and rubble and whatnot um, again if you're looking for a more of a, a your typical warhammer base go a bit heavy with this obviously miss out the skulls and the the rusty bits but you can go a bit heavier on this if you want to uh, i just quite enjoy the, uh, the slightly more slightly more subtle subtle approach to this doing some of the rust on the metal parts so we'll do a wash of scrag brown um, you want this very thin because you, you do want it to pool slightly because then that simulates how how rust actually works the uh, rain falls on it the rust particles follow the water and they pool in certain places 
uh, any, it's called a coffee staining effect. So if you're working on a larger piece of, sort of rusted metal and when the paint dries, you get a coffee stain effect around the edges. That's perfect when you're working with rust because that's what happens. So you, you get a, a mix of the coffee staining effect and a sort of faded smooth effect with, with real rust on, on real panels depending on the age and type of rust. So uh, both effects work really nicely. Um, also, the rust will pool onto nearby surfaces. So just where any of those metal parts touch the floor, just certain areas, just add a little bit of the wash around. So the edge of the pipe uh, will works well. Uh, where the barbed wire touches the ground is also another good one. You can see I do it around some of the uh, around the edge of that pipe uh, in a little bit, and then what we'll do is we'll add some fire dragon bright, which will uh, increase sort of vibrancy of the of the rust and and well, makes it more rust like. Here we go, adding some of the Fire Dragon Bright. Again, thin it so it's sort of a wash consistency. Uh, don't cover all of the scrag brown. You want some of the, the that layer showing through. But just dot it all over the place. Be quite random. Don't need to have smooth, smooth coats or anything like that. just make those skulls a little bit more um, defined we'll just highlight them very slightly with some screaming skull And this bit I just decided to go back in, uh, as mentioned earlier, with some of the rust colours onto the onto the ground, uh, just to simulate where the water sort of dragged the rust 
off the metal pieces and just onto the ground. So this is quite an old, old battlefield. Uh, fresh battlefield may not have as much of this, but it's entirely up to you as to, as to what you want to simulate. So now just so you can get an idea of how it's going to look because it can look if you don't paint the base the, the edge of the base it can look a bit washed out to start with so get the edge of the base painted uh, ideally in black or a fairly dark color and you can you can really see how the effects sort of really work uh, you will need a couple of thin layers for that for some finishing touches this is called a shader from ammo um, which is a mig product it's a acrylic based almost oil kind of wash it's really really good because you can within sort of an hour or two of, of uh, placing it down you can use a wet brush to to move it around and if you uh, and sort of wipe it off sections if you if you're working with vehicles and whatnot so it is really good for vehicles but I, I quite like it as a little extra certain something for for dirt um, it doesn't go all over the base there's no point doing it all over you just want a few patches here and there for just some extra tones and extra colors and things uh, they do a lot of these these shaders they're really really good they act very similar to panel washes. They don't uh, use capillary action, capillary action quite as much as an oil oil paint does, but they're not far off. Um, but you can adjust them like you can with, with oil paints. Um, but obviously they're acrylic. They do dry very, very shiny. So you will need to put a matte varnish over the top once you're done. well worth adding to your arsenal. There we go. All done. Thank you ever so much for watching. Um, please don't forget to like, subscribe, do all the usual stuff, hit the notifications bell and all that, all that jazz and keep you posted for uh, more tutorials. Thanks very much. Bye bye.